Hi, this is Christian Cantrell, and I wanted to show you a few demos of the CSS Regions work Adobe has been doing. If you're not familiar with CSS Regions, it's a relatively new concept which enables web developers and designers to create regions that text can flow in and out of. Um, this is an example of a short story that's been formatted using regions. Before I get into the details of this version, I want to show you the uh, what I call the before format. This is a typical way that you might see something formatted now on the web. You can see that it's primarily a vertical orientation and it's just very, very simple with just a couple of styles. And this makes it readable on the maximum number of devices and screen sizes and resolutions and window sizes and such. This is a version of the same story that's been formatted using CSS regions. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's uh, divided into two columns, which um, gives you sort of a more you know print-like layout and something that um, might be a little bit friendlier to read so that your eyes don't have to travel so far in horizontal direction. Um, but it's not just arranged in columns because uh, that's possible today um, just using you know tables or something like that. Um, but it's actually you know, flowing from one column to another. So you can see when I resize my browser window here that the text is flowing and that it's uh, maintaining this concept of pages. So here's the second page, here's another page, and the text is flowing between the columns um, in the pages. So um, I want to point out um, at this point that this is actually possible today. Um, this will actually work in the latest versions of Chrome. So if you're using Chrome, uh, Chrome Auto Updates, which means you probably already have the capability to do this uh, with, with the code that's out there today. Um, but the other thing to point out, the other uh, the other thing to watch out for, the limitation of this is that although it happens to um, to end on the last page, uh, that's only because um, I knew how many pages I would need, and I sort of hard coded that. And when I expand the browser, you can see that I have additional pages here. So with the code that's available in Chrome right now, you have the ability to make text fro uh, flow between regions, but you don't have um, what's called the CSS object model that's necessary to do more intelligent uh, logic around uh, dynamically creating and removing pages. So I'll show you an example of that in just a second because I have a, uh, a build that does have that capability. Um, what I want to do right now is actually show you the code for this to uh, give you some idea of how it works. Let me just blow this up a little bit. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have a, um, a div right here with the ID content and this is just regular HTML. Um, this is just, uh, you know, just my content. There's no formatting in here at all. Things are described, um, you know, as paragraphs, um, you know, a title and stuff like that. And then I have my uh, selector for content right here. And the thing to watch out for here is the uh, this WebKit flow into property, uh, which is named story. And then I have this concept of uh, a class uh, called columns. And I have um, two properties to, uh, to pay attention to here. One is content. And when you want the value is WebKit uh, flow from story, which was defined here. And uh, so, and also this, this is sort of a second way of doing it, uh, WebKit flow from story. And the reason I do this is just so that it works in newer and older builds simultaneously. Um, so that's pretty much um, all it takes to get text to flow. And now I have a little bit of JavaScript here, which dynamically creates the pages. And this isn't very intelligent. It just creates 30 pages and sort of hopes that, that that's enough. And if it's not enough, um, things get cut off. And if it's too much, we have extra pages. So this is sort of very, very rudimentary. Um, I wouldn't even call this any kind of paging logic at all. Um, and that's because, as I said earlier, the uh, the APIs that I need to do more intelligent paging logic are not available today. But I will give you uh, a preview of what's coming. So that's what you can do today. You can get text to flow uh, from one column to another, which works for some use cases probably. Um, but this is more of what we're going to want in the future. Um, and what we have here is essentially the same document, except for I have this concept of pages, which you can see in the upper right hand corner here, 29 pages. And when I change uh, my browser size, you can see that that number changes. It either increases or decreases depending on how many pages are needed. 
And also I have page numbers down here as well. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the story. And you can see we're on 28 pages. And you can see that as I make the browser window larger, uh, that means I need fewer pages. And so the pages are disappearing. And as I make the browser window uh, more narrow, um, that means I need more pages. And so uh, more pages are appearing. So I have 31, now I have 32, and now I have 34. So that's uh, that's more of what we uh, what we need to have more intelligent paging. And let me show you a couple other examples. Um, here's an example that will add and remove columns, and this is just um, done with CSS. I mean, the, the JavaScript is actually creating the pages, but the CSS is actually deciding um, how many pages to uh, to add um, vertically, or sorry, horizontally to the to the page. So here I can have four. And near my page numbers are down here. I have one through four, and then we go down to the bottom. And uh, let's see, we're running over a little bit, so I'll just change the size of the browser a little bit to uh, try and make it sort of a more reasonable flow. And there we go. So it can be, you know, sort of any any height or width. Let me uh, make it a little bit wider. Add another column there. There we go. So that's a very dynamic and pretty adaptable. Let me show you another example here. Uh, this is this is just a, a quick one. That's essentially the same thing, but there's a fixed header. So just sort of another concept that might be interesting. Now the most interesting one is this uh, layout that I call adaptive, and this is one I put um, I, I put a fair amount of work into. And the idea of this version is that it's completely adaptable to any screen size, whether it's on a uh, on any kind of a device, a tablet or a phone, whether it's on a, a very large screen or a very small screen. I have uh, gestures sort of being emulated here where you can swipe back and forth. And uh, so you can see that when I expand, um, the columns will actually expand to some point, And then once they reach a certain threshold, then another column will be added. Um, and you can see that the paging is still functioning as you'd expect here. Uh, I can make it um, narrower, so we'll go down to two columns. And then once I get past a certain point, it says, okay, well, really, we don't we don't have enough space for multiple columns. We'll just do one column here. And then once, once there's enough um, horizontal space and it switches to two columns. So I don't have, um, you know, all the algorithms, um, or I should say all the, um, all the sort of um, heuristics for the al algorithms perfect yet. So you can see that the font size gets a little large there, but you know, it's just a matter of tweaking it um, and the paging will still, you know, work as expected. So this is all being done using uh, CSS regions to get the text to flow, and it's using the uh, CSS, CSS object model around regions in order to script uh, the layout engine so that the layout engine is all written in JavaScript. And uh, it's uh, really, really powerful capabilities. You can see things where I have my columns uh, fully justified, so I get a very magazine-like layout here. And I have uh, hyphenation turned on here, so you can see that my, um, my words are even being broken. Uh, across lines in the appropriate place. So this is, um, I think, a really, really nice uh, reading experience. And it's really flexible. Uh, so once this is available uh, in multiple browsers and multiple devices, I can you know, deploy content using this kind of a framework, and it will just adapt to any screen size at all. So again, uh, this, the uh, capabilities are available now are um, you know, the ability to just flow text between regions. Now, what's interesting is that this is also available um, on the new uh, Chrome for Android beta. So this is just a screenshot of it on Chrome, and you can see that it, it you know, pretty much looks identical. And I think that's pretty slick that um, that we already have some of our code in the uh, the mobile version of Chrome. Um, so more capabilities are coming soon. Uh, there'll be uh, you know richer layouts with uh, various kinds of text engines, and there'll be lots of examples and code that um, myself and other people on the team will be releasing uh, as soon as it makes sense to. So thanks for watching.